Hey everyone, welcome to a new six weeks. I hope we are all doing well and just ready to start something new. So we're going to be starting marine invertebrates right now. And we'll dive into these more as the week goes on, six weeks goes on. There's a lot of marine invertebrates. We'll also get into sharks and some other specialty types of fish. So that'll be fun. But, okay, so the animal kingdom. Basic characteristics of animals. They are multicellular organisms. They are capable of locomotion. And three, they must ingest food. So there are nine animal phyla. Remember, King Philip came over for good spaghetti. Eight of those phyla are invertebrates. They all lack internal skeleton and some have an exoskeleton or shell. Vertebrates only have one phylum, that's corda, cordata or chordates. They have an internal skeleton made of bone or cartilage. Um, cartilage would be your chondrichthyes. So, you have parazoa or periphria, no true tissues, these are your sponges. Then you have nidera, these are your jellies, radial symmetry. Then you have tenophora, these are your acelomates or no body cavity. Then you have your pseudocelomates. Body cavity not enclosed by a mesoderm. So there's your rotifera. Oh, tenophora, sorry, goes into ra radidia or radiata. Your radio, radial symmetry. Acelomates are your platymyces. And rotifera and nematoda are your pseudocelomate. Their body cavity is not enclosed by a mesoderm. Then you have your pneumataria over here, kind of splitting off. And then you have true tissues, which goes into bilatera or bilateral symmetry, which breaks off. We've already started in on. And then you have coelomates. This will be very, very handy for later in the week, I would definitely take a picture of this because this would save you a lot of Googling when it comes to your chart. Believe me, it will save you time. Just take a picture. So, coelomates, they have a body and cavity enclosed by mesoderm. So, you have your protostoma, Coelom from cell masses, so that's your mollusca and your annelida, and your arthropoda, which are your crabs. Annelida are your worms, mollusca, your, bi, um, your bivalves, your clams, your oysters, your scallops. Then your lophophorate phyla, that's your bryozoa, your phoronida, and your brachiochlorophyta. We'll get into those later. And then you have your de deuterostomata, which is a coelom from digest digestive tube, which is your chordata, which is what we are, your chordates, your vertebrates, and your in... I know how to say this word, enchinostermata. I know, I just completely butchered that. Periphera, these are your simplest animals. These are your sponges. There are no true tissue layers. Example, what I said, sponges. So these are non-moving sessile animals. They have no nerves or muscles. They're mostly marine. They're filter feeders. They collect food particles from the water. And because they're sessile, the water will, they go, they're in areas where there is a bit of a current. So the water will filter through them, just go through them, and they'll collect whatever comes through them. Most sponges are hermaphrodites. 
Hermaphrodites function as both male and female in sexual reproduction by producing both eggs and sperm. Um, another thing about, so as an example of sponges, if you've ever seen like the bath sponges that almost look like coral or they're brown, that is what this is. People, especially in the Caribbean, will harvest these sponges and sell them. So, this animal probably evolved from a colonial flagellated, there's your flagella, protist, like this, coanoflagellate colony. So, here is a cell. So, you have your spinnacles. These are like those cells we saw earlier. The water is going to come through these side cells, which are protocytes, porocytes, and come out the osculum. This outside the epidermis. You have your... And I'm not worried about what all these do, but the water comes in and it goes out and they're going to catch the food in this structure. So outsides can have a collar. It, you see where it catches the food particles. They're catching very, very, very tiny food particles. They're not catching little fish and eating them. So this is an example of a sponge. This is an example of a sponge, another sponge. Classes of phylum Nidera. So class and examples, you have Hydrozoa. These are your Portuguese man of wars, your Hydras, and some corals. Then you have your Scyphozoa. These are your jellies, your sea wasp, and your sea nettles. Then you have your Anthozoa. These are your sea anemones, where Nemo lives. Most of your corals are here and your sea fans. So, hydrozoa. These are mostly marine with a few freshwater. Um, there's a polyp and a medusa stage of these species. I'm not going to make you memorize that. And um, I don't think we're going to get into that real much. It's all with like their reproduction and their growth and all that. But Scyphozoa, mostly marine, all marine. Anthozoa, all marine. Nidera, these are your hollow bodies. They have stinging cells. Two body forms. Okay, so your medusa and then your polyp. Examples are coral, jellyfish, and sea anemone. So, polyp form would be like your traditional jellyfish. Medusa form would be your traditional sea anemone. So you have radial symmetry with central digestive or gastrovascular cavity. So that bubble at the top of a jellyfish is its gastrovascular cavity. One opening in the gastrovascular cavity serves as both the mouth and the anus. They are carnivores. They the phylum name comes from the specialized cells called um, neatocytes. Neatocytes are stinging cells used to, for defense and capture prey. So there you see mouth anus, mouth anus is your gastrovascular cavity. You have your epidermis and your inner tissues tentacles, your tentacles, so your polyp form, your medusa form. Okay, I got this wrong. Medusa looks like a jellyfish. Polyp looks like a sea anemone. I'm sorry, guys. It's been a long day. Okay, here is a close-up of that pneumatocyte. Okay, then you have your polyp colony, turns into medusa, they breed, and then you get it all over again. I'm not going to make you remember this. Okay, 
I might ask you which phylum has a Medusa and a polyp stage. I would hold you responsible for that. Here's some more Nidera's purple striped jellyfish. Sea anemones. Okay. Phylum Tinophora. These are your comb jellies. These are really cool because if there's a bunch of them in an area and you disturb the water they're in, they'll actually light up like that and you can see it. So they resemble Cnidarian medusas and they use cilia for locomotion. So as you can see, these little comb-like structures coming off them, those are cilia. So you have turbularia, which are mostly free-living flatworms. They're mostly marine with some freshwater. You have a few terrestrial. They're predators and scavengers, and their body surface is ciliated, meaning they have cilia. Then you have monogenera. These are your monogenes. These are marine and freshwater parasites. They mostly infect external surfaces of fishes. They have a life history that's simple. They have a ciliated larva that starts an infection on a host. Then you have trematoda or trematodes, also called flukes. These are not like the flukes, like flounder fluke. So these are, these are parasites. They're almost always of vertebrates. You have two suckers attached to the host. Most life histories include intermediate hosts. Then you have Cestotia, the tapeworms. You've got tapeworms. So they're parasites of vertebrates. They're scolex attaches to the host, which is like the head. And propagulatoids produce eggs and break off after fertilization. There's no head or digestive system. Life history with one or more intermediate host. So they have to have a host to like continue on. So plathomyoses. As you can see, they're worms. Unsegmented worms. They're flat worms. Examples, planaria, fluke, and tapeworm. We've all heard of tapeworms. Phylum plathomyoses. Flatworms size ranges from microscopic up to 20 meters long. Many are parasites. Then you have a tapeworm. So it doesn't have a true head. It has just a place to attach to suck the life or nutrients out of somebody. Then you have a flatworm. So there are your ganglia. You have eye spots. This is your gastrovascular cavity, your pharynx. You've got nerve cords. There's a picture of a real life flatworm. You can kind of see that setup in there. Nematoda. So these are un also unsegmented worms. They're round worms versus flatworms. Example, hookworms and heartworms. So... They have proboscis or ribbon worms. They're up to 30 meters in length. These worms have a hydraulically operated proboscis that is used to capture prey and close circulatory systems. So the others had an almost open, open circulatory system. These have closed. So Nema. Terra proboscis worms, as you can see here, really long, round. There's that little head. There's the other end. There's your head-ish end. The round, the groovy. Here's more nematodes. Okay, then you have analyta. These are your, like, earthworms. You have ogliochita. So these are terrestrial and freshwater segmented worms. For example, earthworms. They're reduced head, no parapodia or feet, but setae present. We might get into that in a minute. 
Polychaeta. These are mostly your marine segmented worms. Polychaetes. Their well-developed head, each segment usually has parapodia with setae, tube dwelling, and free living. And then you have your hyrodinia, which are your leeches. Body usually flattened with reduced coelom and segmentation. Setae absent. They're suckers at the anterior and posterior ends. These are parasites, predators, and scavengers. These leeches are what they use to put on people to suck bad blood and help reduce infection and fever. So analidia. They're segmented worms, most advanced worms. Examples, you have leeches and earthworms. So segmented worms, they range from one millimeter to three meters in length. Each segment contains a pair of excretory tubes called metanephar, that word. Annelids are hermaphrodites that cross fertilize. So you have those three classes that we talked about earlier. There's an earthworm. So you have the gizzard, the crop, the esophagus. You have your cerebral ganglia. They don't have a brain yet. Pharynx. And you have nerve cord. Sete, which are, the, I guess, little feelers. Kind of like little feet that help it move along. And... Here's more. This is a Christmas tree worm. There's a leech. Another Christmas tree worm. So, life history of a blood fluke. So, step one, a mature fluke in blood vessels of intestine because they need a host. They have a human host here. Step two, blood flukes reproduce sexually in human host. Fertilize eggs exit the host in feces. Eggs develop in water into ciliated larvae. Larvae infect snails, so their larvae have to have a host. So they're going to go find a snail and infect that snail. And their asexual reproduction within the snail results in another type of motile larva. And that larva is going to penetrate the skin and blood vessels of humans. And the cycle continues. Okay, phylum rotifera. These are rotifers. These are like what baby fish eat. So they're aquatic. So their size ranges from 0.5 to 2 millimeters. And they have a complete digestive tract. Look, it's so cute. They're adorable. I like rotifers. Okay, then you have phylum mollusca. So some have shells, some have unsegmented soft bodies. Examples are snails and scallops. So mollusks fall under phylum mollusca. These are snails, clams, octopi, squids, and oysters. There are at least 150,000 known species of mollusca. All mollusks have similar body plans. They have a muscular foot. They have a visceral mass with organs. They have a mantle that secretes the shell. So their visceral mass would be this whole part. Their mantle is right here. You have the shell on top. You have a gill down here with a heart. You have their coelom, which is their gut and then your gonads. You have a stomach. So examples are polyplacophora, which are marine. You have gastropoda, which are marine freshwater. You have your bivalves, which are your clams, mussels, scallops, oysters. You have your cephalopoda, which is squids, octopuses, and chambered. Nautiluses. So there's an example of a mollusk. 
here's another mollusk. Look, there's another mollusk. And more mollusk. So bivalvia, shells are divided into two parts. Gills are used for feeding and gas exchange. Example, clams and oysters. And there you see a bivalve. Here is what looks to be a scallop. So this is a zebra mussel. And it's going to take those basal threads and attach to stuff. Here's more varieties of zebra mussels. There's them in real life. Class Cephalopoda. These are marine organisms. They have chromatophore cells that can change color. They have a head and foot, select highly intelligent, rapid movement, well-developed, nervous system. These are your octopus, your squid, your nautilus, and your cuttlefish. Look at all of them. Arthropoda, these are your crabs, your crawfish, your lobsters, segmented animals, exoskeletons made of chitin, class crustacean or marine organisms. Example are shrimps, lobsters, crabs, and barnacles. So they're going to have a hard exoskeleton, segmented bodies, and jointed appendages. Arthropods are the most successful of all animal phyla based on diversity, distribution, and numbers. Nearly 1 million species identified so far. They're mostly insects. You have the exoskeleton or cuticle is composed of protein and chitin. Open circulatory systems in which a heart pumps hemolyph through short arteries and into open spaces. Aquatic members have gills for gas exchange. Terrestrial members have tracheal system of branch tubes leading from surface throughout body. There is a lobster. This gives you the rundown on different arthropoda classes. So you have crustacea, you have insects, you have centipedes, you have millipedes, you have spiders. You can pause this and read it if you want to. There is an arthropod. There's a horseshoe crab. Those things get heavy. There's another arthropod. It's a millipede looking thing. There's more. Crustacea, crabs and lobsters. There are about 40,000 species. They're almost all aquatic. This includes krill and copepods and amphipods. There's a lobster. There's a type of shrimp. A kind of dermata. They have a dermal skeleton with spines and plates. They only live in the marine environment. So these are your sea urchins, sea stars, and brittle stars. So they have a water vascular system, network of hydraulic canals used for locomotion, feeding, and gas exchange. It extends into tube feet that are used for locomotion and feeding. Echinoderms appear to be radial but have bi are bilateral in larval stages. They have spiny bodies. So there you go. There's your anus. You have your digestive glands, your radial canals, your gonads, more echinoderms, different types of starfish, sea urchin, chordata. This is us. They have an internal skeleton and a backbone to protect their spinal cord. Example, fish, reptiles, birds, amphibians, mammals, and we are done. If you have any questions, let me know. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.